What is a good MCAT score? What is the average MCAT score or the most perfect MCAT score? In today's video, I'm going to answer these questions and then I'll tell you what you need to do in order to secure a good MCAT score. Hi, I'm Nadine Evans, an admissions associate at BMO Academic Consulting. Make sure you subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you'd like us to help you with your MCAT preparation, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Very quickly, the MCAT test, which is a daunting seven and a half hours, is a standardized multiple choice exam designed to test your preparedness for the study of medicine. The test is divided into four sections, the biological and biochemical foundations of living systems, chemical and physical foundations of biological systems, psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior, and the critical analysis and reasoning skills section. Now, how is it scored? Well, your score is based on the number of questions that you answer correctly. Wrong answers do not affect your score, so you're not penalized for answering incorrectly. So because of this, make sure that you answer all questions when you take the test, even if you're unsure of the answer. It's best to make an estimated guess than to leave one of the answers blank. The correct answers in each section are converted to a scaled score, ranging from 118, which is the lowest possible score, to 132, which is the highest possible score. The scores for the all four sections are added together, and this means that the lowest possible MCAT score you can get is a 472, and a 528 is the highest score. So, what is a good MCAT score? The simple answer is that a good MCAT score is a score that is equal to or higher than the average accepted MCAT score at your chosen schools. Now, each school will set its own MCAT expectations. Some schools will not consider an applicant with a score lower than a 511, while others may be happy to accept students with lower scores. However, it's important to try not to just focus on one number. You must study and aim to get the highest score possible in your first test setting. You definitely don't want to be settling for the minimum requirements because this kind of outlook is not going to encourage your study habits and it's not going to be pushing your determination. So let's look at some hard facts. The truth is that your chances of acceptance increase as your GPA and MCAT score increases. According to the AAMC's analysis, if your GPA was between a 3.6 to a 3.79 and you scored between a 502 to 505 on the MCAT, the acceptance rate was around 34.7%. Now, with that same GPA, let's say that you scored instead between a 510 to 513. Now the acceptance rate was at 64.6%. Finally, if you did exceptionally well on the MCAT and you scored above a 517, the acceptance rate was 73.6%. So really, what this tells us is that you absolutely need to do well on the MCAT as it will increase your chances of acceptance. Okay, so that's all great, but how do you do this? How do you get a good MCAT score? Well, the first thing you need to do is know what is on the exam. You need to understand what to expect on the MCAT exam, and the online AAMC resource is really, really important, and you absolutely need to read through these documents, which will give you information about each MCAT section. It also provides helpful video tutorials, sample questions, and explanations. You're allowed to print this resource and reference it alongside your coursework when you're studying. It will give you a guideline as to what disciplines you should focus on and which sections of your studies you should concentrate on. Next, you need to take practice tests. In order to prepare a study plan, you must first know where you stand and how much you know. So you need to figure out your baseline. So to do this, you need to take a full-length practice exam to identify your strengths and weaknesses in the disciplines and areas that are covered in the exam. You can use the AAMC worksheets to document how you did on the practice exam, or you can create your own method of keeping score. List your concerns and challenges for each MCAT section. You can also write down general concerns about taking the test. So for example, did you lose focus? Did you get tired halfway through the test? Were some sections completely unknown to you? This worksheet will be a good foundation to outline specific concepts, categories, disciplines, and skills that you need to improve on. The next step in your study plan should be assembling the information and gathering resources. So you need to get all the resources that are gonna help you focus on the content of the exam, as well as how to practice and applying your own knowledge in the exam setting. Next, it's very important to remember that your study strategy needs to incorporate as many learning tactics and modules as possible. It's probably not going to be enough to just read the textbooks. Passive learning will only get you so far. You need to incorporate active learning strategies into your study plan. Some of these may include voicing or writing down summaries of what you have read or watched 
explaining concepts in your own words to people who have nothing to do with the medical field. If they understand your explanation, then you're on the right track for understanding yourself. You could discuss the MCAT content with fellow medical school applicants. You should take full length tests, as I mentioned before, and you should also practice with sample questions. So here are some more tips that I wanna give you. Review what you studied or practiced during the previous day whenever you have time. Reviewing the problem areas that you've identified in your plan and regular revisions will help you retain the information. Keep in mind that you don't always need to be in a formal setting when you're doing your review. You could practice on your way to school or work, on the bus, on the subway. Use the free time to review these small chunks of information that you learned the previous day to help with your retention. The next tip I have for you is that you should time yourself. Time yourself when you answer these practice questions and when you do the full length exam. When you review your answers, try to analyze why you answered them correctly or incorrectly. In the case of a wrong answer, go back and review the discipline or concept to advance your level of knowledge. The reason it's also important to time yourself is because you can see if you're spending too long on a certain area, which will also let you know that you're struggling in a certain area. Next, you wanna prepare questions. Make sure that you prepare a set of questions that you'll ask yourself after you read a textbook, after you watch a video. This list may include questions like, how can I explain this concept to a friend? Can I think of a real life scenario where this concept may be applied? How is this related to other concepts that I already studied? Do I understand this concept? And if not, where can I find out more information about this concept? Another tip that you can try is using flashcards. Create your own detailed flashcards with concepts, vocabulary lists, and diagrams to help you study. You could also try studying with a partner or in a group. This collaborative study of teaching others, going through difficulties, helping each other can be really useful. Uh, you can think out loud, you can share knowledge, and you can even quiz each other. It's also important to ask for help. It's totally normal to approach a professor with a list of questions you may have about the MCAT content. While you're studying, make sure that you keep a list of the concepts that you struggle with and any other questions that you may have. Then you could schedule a meeting with your professor and you could ask for help with some of these concepts that you're really struggling with. Next, it's a good idea to summarize. So summarize what you learn from memory. Create diagrams and charts and compare concepts. Check your summaries by using lecture notes, textbooks, or any of your other study resources. Summaries are a great way to revisit content that you already understand, and this practice will cement your learning. Finally, you could join a class or don't be shy to seek the help of a professional prep program. If you're feeling like you're really struggling with the concepts, you don't really know where to begin, then this can be a great resource for you to help get you on track. Well, this will wrap up another one of our videos. So please subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you have any questions that I didn't cover in today's video. Are you wondering if your current MCAT score is good enough or if you should retake the test? Let me know in the comment section. Lastly, if you'd like us to help you prepare for the MCAT, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Thanks for watching, see you next time.